Welcome to another exciting episode of Will It Run It? Today we're going to check and see if this 750 watt power inverter can power that mini fridge. I'm going to be testing this with a VOT 750 watt power inverter. I bought this thing at Sam's Club 10 years ago for no joke 15 bucks. This thing was on clearance. I couldn't pass it up. I haven't really ever used it though. It was just such a good deal that uh, I couldn't pass it up. I had to buy it. Um, it was manufactured 12 9 2010 it's 2020 right now so this thing is a solid 10 years old um, 750 watt is what it claims to be we're going to uh, it's probably modified sine wave just based on the price point we're going to see what it does the battery i'm going to be testing this is a dura start i bought this thing at atwoods it's a 960 cranking amp 800 cold cranking amp it was uh, manufactured or shipped May 2020. It's November 2020, so it should be a pretty darn fresh battery. And the fridge is rated at 1.4 amps with 5.3 amps max. 5.3 amps times 120 volts equals 636 watts. Since our inverter is 750, on paper, this should all work fine. Now when you're dealing with compressors, you usually have that initial kick, which sometimes can uh, throw these types of things off, because it may actually exceed 5.3 amps. But, on paper, this should all work, so let's see what happens. So I do want to point out the fact that this probably would not work if this was going off of a cigarette lighter plug in the vehicle. You may notice that the wires on the low voltage side of this inverter are going to be a lot heavier duty and thicker than the wires that we're going to be using on the high voltage side. And that's because on the low voltage side, you're going to have a lot more current flowing through this than you will on this side. Let me explain. This is 12 volts. This is 120 volts. That means there's going to be a 10 time factor difference between the amps coming out of these versus the amps leaving this. So our fridge was 5.3 amps. That means we're going to have to, at max, these wires have to be able to support that initial spike of 53 amps. If I was using smaller wires, it may still be able to pull that amp for a brief moment. The problem is you're going to have significant voltage drop. And the voltage drop is potentially what would prevent this thing from being able to start the fridge. So we still don't know if this will run it because uh, we haven't tested it yet, but I wanted to make sure I clarified that. Now, the other problem here is I don't actually have a way to test the low voltage side um, to see how many amps are coming out because I don't have a multimeter that can handle over 50 amps. Um, in fact, I don't even have one that can handle over 5 amps. <laughs> I just have small ones. Um, but I do have this kilowatt meter, uh, which will be able to check it on the high voltage side. I can switch over to amps or what I really care about, which is watts. So I'm going to leave this thing set to watts. You can see I've already got it plugged in and turned on. It's pulling a, or it's, it's uh, at 117 volts. So let's switch it over to watts. So here goes, plugging it in. Okay, the kilowatt meter raid ran up to 228 watts. It beeped. I'm sure that was an overload protection beep, but good news, the fridge is running. Now this was a cold start. This fridge had not been running, had not been plugged in actually for weeks, so there was no load on that compressor. Chances are right now if I unplugged this and immediately plugged it back in, it would not be able to start this because the, uh, the initial current would be much higher. Another interesting point is this thing is saying it's pulling about 67 watts. The fridge said it was a 1.4 amp current, continuous. And uh, that would have be about 168 watts. So now the question is, is it actually running it? Is it sustaining its running? Or is it low wattage because the compressor just started and it's going to slowly spin up? So I'm curious. I'm going to let it run for a little while and we'll see what happens. But it is roughly only about, oh, you know why? It's the power factor. Huh. Okay, well that's interesting. I didn't realize that and I don't really even know what that means, but the power factor, so it actually is pulling an amp, right? But it's only pulling 70 watts, but it's still registering an amp and that's because the uh, power factor is 0.58. You also have to consider the power factor. Now I don't know if that's a bad sign. Uh, I don't really know what power factor means to be honest. But uh, I know that these uh, modif are these yeah these modified sine wave inverters aren't very efficient, and so 
uh, that could be that could be bad for the compressor. I don't know, but uh, I do know that it is running it. Um, it is getting cold. It's already actually really cold to the touch. So that's uh, that's kind of interesting. Now the so the next question would be, if this thing were to run, how long would it run for? It's pulling 72 watts. It slowly it looks like it's slowly creeping up. So I've had this thing running for a few minutes now. It seems to be kind of stabilizing around 70 watts. You can tell the power inverter, the uh, fan on it's picked up quite a bit to uh, cool it down. Um, now, 70 watts would be kind of like, you know, similar to leaving your headlights on with your vehicle not running. I don't want to start the vehicle to run this test. So to keep from depleting the battery, I went ahead and hooked up this battery charger. Um, I've got it set to fast charge, which is roughly a 15 amp output, and it says it's putting out about 12.7 amps. So I'm just kind of doing this to help offset. So 12 amps at 12 volts would be 140 watts, so it is able to keep up. This is probably the least energy efficient way of running a fridge, but uh, this is a test. I'm really kind of curious to see uh, if I could, let's say for instance, if I were going on a long drive and I wanted to keep a bunch of drinks cold on the way, I wanted to be able to run a mini fridge in the back on a power inverter. That's kind of why I'm doing this test to see if that scenario would work. And uh, according to what this thing's saying, you know, roughly 70 watts, um, you know, it does say one amp. One amp would convert to 12 amps on the 12 volt side because it's a factor of 10. 12 amps doesn't seem like it would be that significant of a draw. It's not insignificant, but usually these vehicles have what, maybe 100, 200 amp alternators, I would think. I'll have to research and see what the amp output is on this alternator, but you know, I would think if you were uh, if you were running a diesel with dual batteries and the and the big alternator, the high output alternators that come on those diesels, this wouldn't flinch it, but for a, for a small economy car, this is this is a Kia Sorento, so I'm not really sure. I wouldn't think it would have that crazy of an alternator in it. So this has been running for about 40 minutes, and it actually just shut off. It's at uh, zero watts now, um, zero amps, um, you know, power factor of one because there's no current being pulled, and it's showing it's 116 volts. After it shut off, the fan shut off on the power inverter, so that's great, um, and... Uh, our fridge is cold. It's really cold. You actually can, it feels like there's a little bit of frost starting to form on it. So the question was, will this power inverter run that mini fridge? And the answer is yes, it successfully ran it. We ran it for about 40 minutes. No problems.